I'm the director of design for Indian Motorcycle. <laughs> mm. I'm definitely a fan of the white one. All these little, like the fade. Inverted front forks, adjustable suspension. What up, Block Fam? Welcome to today's episode. Beautiful view right off the bat. We've got the brand new Indian Scout and the various different models. We are separating into different groups. We're literally leaving in six minutes, so I'm gonna do this uh, super quick. Um, yeah, we've got various different models, which I will be sure to list uh, on the screen. You guys can see a picture of it right there. And uh, over the next couple days, we're going to be riding all of the different models. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to let you guys have a good look at all of it. We got Sean Mack leading the route. He's going to be uh, sharpening his uh, foot pegs. I'm going to be trying to keep up. I'm going to do a terrible job at it because this guy's a machine. No, I'm just going to try and stay out of Bradley's way. Oh yeah? A contender has entered the chat. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Morgan. What's up, guys? You guys have seen him in videos before. <laughs> Brandon Picasso. What up? <laughs> Alright, so we're in group one. Group one is race to the death. <laughs> right? How would you describe group one? The best group. The best group? The fastest Good group. job. Because we have our fearless overlord, Sean. <laughs> overlord. <laughs> Let's cut to the bike. I'm going to quickly go over controls before we get started. And, um, let's do it. All right, guys, we are geared up for the most part. I think everybody's finishing up. All right, Picasso, you were saying this is what? The Super Scout? Super Scout. Super Scout. So I'm glad you said that because with the five new models, I was definitely confused as to which is to which. So it's going to take us a little bit to get down the verbiage. So if I mess any of it up, my apologies right off the bat. The one that I'm not confused on is the 101, which is this one here. Funnily enough, it's the top tier. All right, so startup sequence. Here we go. We've got button on the left now. So boom, right here. So you press that, indicate red. We're going to let it boot for a second. There it is. Boop. So you basically press that, turns the bike on, and then you hit one button start. There we go. Good to go. LED light, nice and bright. That rhymed. We do have changeable screens. So if I wanna go from here to one that's a little bit different, got the RPMs up top, speed in the center, gear indicator, got your direction and then your ambient temp. I guess let's go ahead and go over controls real quick. On the left side, you've got your high beam, low beam. It's clutch, obviously. So high beam, you're gonna press one, uh, press it up to stay on. Press it back down, and then if you want to pass, you're going to press and pull. Cruise control, awesome. Uh, back for the options, this is going to be a little joystick for the menu and stuff. You've got your indicators on the left. Holy low center of gravity, Batman. <laughs> this bike, <laughs> super low center of gravity. Just throw it in neutral real quick. Easy to find neutral. Nice positive click in first. Dude, the center of gravity on these things is just insane. That's what I remember about riding the Scout back in the day. All right, so setting, where are we riding? <laughs> Welcome to San Francisco. Hell yeah, brother. Got your left indicator, indicates there, right indicator indicates there. Press in to cancel, got your horn. Meep. Here you've got your options button, you've got your on off. So if I press options, that's gonna change. Different stuff in the gauge, which we will dive into a little bit later. Wow, 
riding a motorcycle in downtown San Francisco. Awesome. Dude, the ability to throw this thing around is crazy. I always forget like how low like center of gravity feels on this thing. It's pretty insane. So we got option. This is going to take us into the first little screen. There's some little bullet points in the bottom there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's going to take us through those. Also, the bike is currently in sport mode. This thing it smells brand new. It smells like it's burning the new off right now. <laughs> All right, so if I hit option again, it's going to take us over to current ride metrics. So ride time, two minutes, distance, 0.4 miles. Moving, stopped, elevation, and odometer. Go option again. It takes us to the built-in GPS, which is amazing. The seat height on these things is insanity. I'm just, I feel like I'm sitting on the ground right now. Woo! They are all six speed now, so the previous iteration of the Scout did have a five speed version. Damn, the elevation change is just insane. <laughs> Dude, starting on this hill is gonna suck. Pause you guys before we get too far into the video. I wanted to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is BetterHelp. Riding a motorcycle can be a form of therapy for all of us. Sometimes we all need a little extra support on our journey to better mental health off of the bike though. That's where today's sponsor BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp is an online platform that connects individuals with licensed therapists. You can connect with your therapist anytime, anywhere. It eliminates the need for typical face-to-face -face appointments. If you're struggling with anxiety, depression, any other concern, BetterHelp provides a wide range of therapists with diverse specialties. You can discover the power of motorcycles and therapy, a winning combination for a healthier mind and soul by clicking the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash blockhead. Not only does it support the channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month of better help. This year, I've gone through some pretty big transitions in my life. Moving to Florida was one of them. Starting a new job was one of them. So I actually reached out and signed up for BetterHelp myself so I could get a little more guidance in these transitions. Big thanks to BetterHelp for being along for the ride. All right, stopping here, Golden Gate Bridge. And I said, hola, you're mine. Dude, he just pops up. He does. Whenever you say his name, he just happens to be I'm here. <laughs> there he is. All the way from where? Sweden. All the way from Sweden. Over Germany. Yeah. Yeah, so if you look in the mirror and you say Ola three times, he appears. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have Ola. You want to introduce yourself, tell us what you do with Indian Motorcycle? I'm uh, Ola Stenegard. I'm the director of design for Indian Motorcycle. All right, guys, real quick. Uh, ended up doing a whole interview with Ola, and it's a really, really great interview, very insightful, but ended up being a little long. So for sake of this video being the test ride video, we're gonna make that its own standalone video. So if you guys wanna check that out, be sure that you are subscribed. Whenever it's up, I'll be sure to link it down in the description below. Thanks, back to the video. Bye. Appreciate it. Take care. Film on the bobber. I dig it. It's a it's a Once cool bike, but I wish it guys, had a little bit more stuff, suspension travel. On that on one inch less. Like, yeah. That's one inch too few. <laughs> Dude, it looks good though. You look good on it, man. Oh, yeah. 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 No, it's a cool looking bike for sure. All right, on the classic now. Longer fenders, no windshield. Chrome. Classic time. Feel a good bit different. Ooh, this definitely feels a lot more like the uh, Scout that I rode previously. Mm. I'm definitely a fan of the white one. It looks good. All right, so the first most noticeable thing that I'm uh, picking up on this one is wind of the helmet. Uh, for obvious reasons, the last bike that I'm coming off of had a windshield. So wind on the helmet on this one, which actually super clean wind. So such a beautiful day for this. God, 
So lucky. Time for the gratitude segment. Hey guys, the reason this is my job is because you guys watch, because you like the videos, because you subscribe, because you comment, because you sign up for our website, you sign up for our motorcycle giveaways, you buy our merch, you buy our t-shirts, participate in our Discord, you follow us on Instagram, you follow us on Facebook, like all these things that this all adds up to the reason that I'm able to do this as a job. So cannot thank you guys enough really appreciate you on that note if you guys aren't subscribed and you enjoy motorcycle content be sure to subscribe and if you guys are enjoying the video thus far be sure to hit the like button as well if you guys want to win a motorcycle we give away motorcycles we've been doing it for a while we're on season 10 now i think we've given away like 12 or 13 bikes but the current one we're giving away it's a sucker punch sally which was previously owned by the reverend horton heat jim heath in order to get in on that giveaway, head over to blockheadmotor.com, sign up, select a tier, and you guys are in. With that, you get various other perks, such as early access to episodes, exclusive access to our Discord, big discounts on our merchandise, and more. On with the Indian Scout test ride. That was uh, a pretty fun ride. Those mid-corner bumps, those little heaves. Yeah. Uh, I wish I had a bit more suspension travel on those. <laughs> Were you on the bobber? Uh, no, I was on the super. Oh, good thing you weren't on the bobber. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm even less. For that. Right. <laughs> Silver lining. <laughs> Grasso, what were your thoughts on the uh, on that road with the classic? The fact that you can do something like that on the bike that looks like that, <laughs> it's kind of sick. Like, Trail breaking in and then next thing you hit a bump and the thing's Pro like, break. yeah, it throws you off, but the bike handled it well. But I'm glad I wasn't on the bobber. Yeah. That would have sucked. Who was on a bobber during that run? I want to talk to them. I was telling him, I hope Indian wants to buy me a new spleen after that one because, yeah, the two inches of travel just isn't sufficient on a bumpy road like that. I got bucked out a few times. Yeah. guys so on the scout bobber now and i can tell you the <laughs> the ergos on this one are so much different an inch less of suspension travel as compared to the other bikes but man it feels aggressive you are low and lean on this thing love the red looks great you are very tucked you are very taco like those taco ergos it does feel so aggressive though i'm a big fan of the bobber for sure it was kind of funny because initially you know looking at the bike from the front with the nacelle around the headlight i wasn't the biggest fan but it's definitely grown on me like especially like coming from this angle looking down it just visually adds like this nice balance it's crazy to think the guy in my rear view mirror right now ola responsible for so much of the design behind these things him and his team super cool to be able to ride with him as well as the rest of the team from indian motorcycle So we've done Super Scout, Bobber, and Classic. We will continue tomorrow on the next ones. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Next day, you guys will see that I have the bike with the risers on the front and the little bags. This is the Ola Special. He's gonna be super pissed that I have it. All right, so at breakfast, and they're doing this new motorcycle thing in the sand, which is super cool. Ola, how do you feel? about I'm stealing your motorcycle today. Are you gonna take the one with the 10 inch racers? They put my name on it. Oh no! I'm gonna go change it. <laughs> one photo shoot up. Yeah, I'll give it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, man. I'm like, who's gonna be pissed off? <laughs> okay, guys. So we're on a very special one today. Since it's got the risers, we got the Ola special. Let's go ahead and adjust mirrors. Mirrors, super cool, premium they're by Rizoma so oh yeah this is comfy 
dare the risers on here make this thing so different it's crazy it's one of those things that i always say like there's three points that you should always pay attention to whenever you get a motorcycle and that's the three points of contact your rider triangle your bars your seat and your controls you change those things it will make the motorcycle drastically different and that's exactly what this has done so basically going from the bikes that we rode yesterday the bobber the classic super scout so those bars obviously all lower a little bit different between the models having these things up more this feels like i'm riding you know my bike and my personal bike i've got a harley davidson soft tail low rider s goldzilla i've got some risers on it mx style bars so very similar setup to this having your arms at just below shoulder level it's uh it definitely feels more natural and it's cool to think that these risers are available straight from indian motorcycles so it's basically got the gauge mount built into it my time with the uh, sport with the taller risers is being handed off to cycle world here you guys be sure to go check them out if you want some feedback on it too and I am switching over to the 101 finally so saving the best for last I found a white one because he looking good that ghost white beautiful bike all right guys now time for the main events the indian scout 101 big changes on this one we've got inverted front forks adjustable suspension dual disc brembos on the front which brandon says you can feel pretty well then also on the back we've got some reservoir shocks i think that's the biggest difference is yeah paint obviously looks beautiful sport mode good to go preferring this gauge setup it's just easier to read versus the other one there's like a lot of info on it so for ripping around gear indicators way more visible rpm range way more visible 9,000 rpm it's nuts man i fucking love this paint scheme all right let's feel the 101 and see what this thing's all about it's kind of interesting coming from the last one the ergo is obviously much much different the difference between this and the bobber significant more suspension travel a little bit taller bars yeah front brakes feel much much touchier noticeable difference in suspension for sure handling in the corners feels much better sketchy it's actually a really nice alleyway but uh yeah i figured i'd go ahead and uh, shoot here wrap up my thoughts and of course picking the uh 101 because it's my favorite like out of all the bikes like which one would i pick i would pick the 101 why would i pick the 101 out of all of them for me personally if i were going to buy this motorcycle i wouldn't be touring on it so i don't need bags i don't need like a bigger windshield forward controls i actually didn't mind too much i would probably want to try mid controls on it so they do offer mid controls as an option and just the overall styling really great braking obviously much better since it is dual disc brembos better suspension which was noticeable especially in those very technical uh you know turns and corners and all the stuff we were doing in the mountains if i were going to buy one of them uh this would probably be the one however like i was saying 
Uh, it's a cool thing that Indian Motorcycle did with releasing this new Scout. They kind of use it like a really awesome baseline. It's like a Swiss Army knife, you know? And so if you guys want something for touring, you want something with like some, you know, larger bags, they have that. If you want something with smaller bags, they've got that as well. If you want a quick detachable windshield, they've got that. If you want something a little bit more sporty, they have that. If you want something like a little bit more aggressive, you know, the bobber, they've got that. It's really cool that they've kind of brought it up to, up to speed, given the bike a really good update. One criticism that I noticed right off the bat, and this is just me being picky, this isn't like a make or break, this is literally me just being picky based on how other manufacturers do this, but a lot of them do have the heated grips. I don't know if this is like the heated grip line or if it's just for the switch housing, but you've basically got lines coming out of the bottom of the grips and they are tethered to the bars with these little um, like rubber band kind of things, which is good, you know, so they're not just hanging. But whenever they go here, they're all just kind of uh, jumbly. There are other manufacturers that uh, will internally wire. There's both a pro and a con to that. The pro of it is that it looks nice and tidy. So you don't have wires basically just, you know, kind of hanging out, coming out of here. Uh, going all which every way um, what they do is they'll you know wire it into the bars and then it'll come out through here and then down in a single uh, loom of wire or they'll run it through the riser the pro is that it looks nice it looks tidy um, it's that like extra little attention to detail the con is if you want to change your bars it is way, way more of a job because now you have to essentially take apart your switch housings, uh, you have to depin everything, um, you have to pull all the wires, and then whenever you run the new bars, you have to basically run all that wiring again, you know, using the whole like nut on a shoestring trick and compressed air and all that stuff. It's quite a, like a very, very big job to internally wire bars. I can totally understand with their want of aiming this bike towards people modifying it and whatnot, I can kind of understand, you know, like leaving the bars externally wired. So, you know, just having them here because at that point it's super easy. You know, you're gonna basically undo the bolts here, bolts here, probably gonna have a screw or two in uh, the housings here, undo the bolts here, take these bars off, take everything off and then swap them out with something else. You can do larger or taller risers. So whenever I was sitting on this, I did feel like I was reaching a bit, me being five foot 10, you know, like I, I felt comfortable and like kind of sitting upright is here. But then like, you know, as you're like riding it for a while, you know, a couple hundred miles, it's like, I feel like I'm reaching a bit forward, but that's once again, easily solvable. That's literally just ergonomics. So not a huge deal. I was actually pleasantly surprised by the seat. Usually that is a big point of, uh, of feedback and criticism, um, the seats, but the seat was actually pretty nice, especially on this model. It is a little different. Um, I think they said it has like a little bit taller of a back part, so it's got that support. I couldn't really feel like a huge difference in, they say has more horsepower and torque. I did notice whenever we were on the, those very technical roads that it was easier to close the gap. After we'd go through the turns, if there were, like I needed to catch up, it was easier, like quicker to close that, obviously with that extra horsepower. It wasn't hugely, hugely noticeable, but it is a little bit noticeable. Regarding the valve covers, they were talking about having these easily accessible to be able to pull off and get to the bolts and whatnot here through the top. Props to them for that. And then also customization options if you wanna pull those off, powder coat them, you know, style it, all that stuff. Additionally, like the new frame, the fact that it's a steel tube frame instead of the aluminum, um, I think is awesome. We're gonna see, you know, people that are basically gonna start chopping these up. Uh, essentially that's the purpose. It's easier to weld on steel than it is aluminum. One more point of feedback, uh, this little side button. So you press it and it basically turns the bike on, brings it to life. There were a couple people that were talking about that and people were basically saying like, it's the same as if you were to have a key, uh, but the bikes have a fob. And so you can essentially, you can just pull the seat off like that. And right now they have the fobs right here. It's just zip tied in there. So it, it sees that it has the fob on here. The way that some other manufacturers do it, you know, since there's no key, uh, no push button there, it's literally just built into the switch. I think it's kind of a redundancy. Say the bike is off and this switch is off and you were to click it down, it would basically turn it on and then you'd press to start it. Essentially it would be the same thing as pressing down here. So another awesome thing about this is that they do provide a jumper um, to the battery right here. So if you need to jump, you can basically pull that there's the uh, positive or a uh, link to the positive terminal. You can get access to the battery by using like a hook or something. 
and it pulls right out. So rather than having to reach like way into the guts of the bike or whatever, it's uh, accessible right there under the seat. So overall thoughts on the bike, big fan. Do have those little small criticisms, nothing huge. Overall, love the styling, looks great, super iconic. The suspension on the other ones, on the bobber, I mean, it's an inch less travel. So you have, I think it's like total two inch travel. It is a little rough on the bobber, but that's one of those things where it's like, you are paying to look cool. You're entering like chopper territory type stuff. So with the bobber, like you're losing uh, some suspension travel in the back, but it's dropping that fender. It's giving them that low lean look, even lower seat height, which is crazy, but great bike. Looks awesome. Whenever I got on that one, I was like, hell yeah. Like this is what I was used to feeling with the Scout because uh, you know, we gave away uh, an Indian Scout a while back. Anyways, literally Swiss Army knife with the Scout, like whatever you want, whatever you want to buy it for. If you want a tour, if you want around town, if you want something a little bit more sporty, you know, they've got it all, uh, got the basis covered there. So in terms of power, plenty of power this engine is very very stout which is great anytime i needed you know to get on throttle like whenever we were going through traffic and whatnot no problem whatsoever you know just like downshift or just grab a handful of throttle and you're going since it does have different ride modes you can adjust that throttle responsiveness and it does change quite a bit which is cool transmission felt good very positive shifts wasn't difficult to find neutral um six speed on all of them now the 101 does have more horsepower more torque uh which you can actually buy um as an unlock i think they said through a flash through the dealership they basically like flash the bike give it a new tune gives you more horsepower gives you more torque with manufacturers they are limited by the epa so they have to have stuff like this real big exhaust uh, because they have to hit like a certain decibel level they have to hit a certain like emission standard as well so i think they were saying this was rated for the incoming euro spec so a lot of indians uh, market share is uh, overseas and so that is something that you know they're obviously concerned about you know we're in california right now and i think they have like vehicle checks and stuff i live in florida they do not have vehicle checks so overall what are your thoughts on the uh the new scout um, i think it's going to surprise some people and i would challenge people to just go look at it even if you don't buy it just go ride it yeah just ride it form your own opinion because our takes is only yeah. one one angle of it go sit on them go ride them and form your own opinion so. yeah, yeah for real that's actually really good advice uh, because you guys are, you know, getting our thoughts and opinions. But at the end of the day, it matters what you think. So if you're trying to decide which model, if you're looking at something like this, go to a dealership, figure out when there's a demo day, go ride it for yourself. And that gives you your best answer. There you go, guys. Those are my thoughts and opinions on the brand new Indian Scout and all of the sub models. Riding this thing over the last couple days has been an absolute pleasure. I cannot thank Indian Motorcycle enough for the opportunity. We really greatly appreciate it. If you guys do have any questions on it though, do me a favor, drop them down in the comment section below. Let me know and I will answer to the best of my knowledge based on my experience with these motorcycles over the last couple days. If you guys did enjoy this video, if it was insightful, if you guys were thinking about picking one of these up, do me a favor, hit the like button. Let's YouTube know that we're doing a good job. Other people that might be interested in this motorcycle or researching the subject, it'll help YouTube to recommend it to them as well. If you guys want to continue to see motorcycle content like this and you are not subscribed, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon also, so it sends you notifications of future uploads and activity. Until next time, you guys ride safe out there, stay vigilant. See you guys in the next one. Peace.